All right, folks. Let's go. God bless you guys. Welcome to This Is It, 4, 3, 2, 1, Before the Fire. Okay, I'm going to take a deep breath. Okay, guys. Isaiah 12. You're going to want to get Isaiah 12 open. You're, you're going to want to get your notepads out. I want you guys to write this down. No one will be ever be able to deceive you. I don't care if they add, tell you they're a preacher. Whatever they tell you doesn't matter because the Word of God is going to speak in a way right now that's going to blow your mind. All glory to God. <laughs> Just all glory to the King. This is a gift. You couldn't get this. this you couldn't get this by studying. Okay, this is the Lord just giving it. Okay, y'all ready? All right, let's talk about, we're going to identify Jesus, who he is, what the scriptures say, exactly the identification of Christ. And then we're going to go and we're going to look in the Old Testament. And we're going to, I'm going to show you Christ in the Old Testament. It was the most obvious thing. And it's like, my God, they've made a massive effort to hide this. This has to be known. I mean, there is no way that rabbinical teachers would not be able to show this to people. And I, I've heard that the book of Isaiah is a book that rabbinical teachers keep from the Jews. Uh, they try and keep them in just the Pentateuch and like, you know, hey, stay away from the book of Isaiah. And now I know the reason why. Because in the book of Isaiah, if you're paying attention or if the, well, I shouldn't say paying attention, if the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you and you have the book of Isaiah, you're going to blow the lid off the thing. Okay, y'all ready? Okay, now. I'll tell you what, um, one of our subscribers, um, uh, one of his, his channel, I think is called Moses the Pug. He's the guy that makes these super incredible gifts. I mean, the images of the, the Vatican changing, you know, into the snake and some of the sheep changing, the image of the virgin changing into a dead sheep. So the guy that does those, his, his moniker is Moses the Pug. And uh, he made a little short video and he sent it to Zach and I because we're working on the DVD right now. So what I would like to do is I would like to play you this little, I think it's like a basically a four minute video done by someone else that follows the ministry. And what incredible, I mean, what incredible insight for the, for this guy to put together this little shorty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the little shorty for you. And then we're going to have a Bible study to beat all Bible studies going to blow your mind but this is a good way to lead into it okay here we go all right and before i play this i want to say thank you so much for sharing this with everybody this is super cool awesome okay guys check this out this is a great little video pay attention okay here we go ready So, everyone wants to go to heaven when we die. So how do we get there? Well, the Bible tells us with the keys in Matthew 16, 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So what are the keys? And what did Peter say? Well, in the Acts of Peter, he told us when he was about to die. Now remember, in John 21, 19, Peter's death would glorify God. So how did Peter die? I beseech you, the executioners, crucify me thus, with the head downward and not otherwise, and the reason wherefore, I will tell unto them that hear. So Peter wanted to be crucified on an upside down cross. Now, how does that glorify God? Well, it's key for understanding, and Peter told us while he hung there. Concerning which the Lord saith in a mystery, unless ye make the things of the right hand as those of the left, and those of the left as those of the right, and those that are above as those below, and those that are behind as those that are before, ye shall not have knowledge of the kingdom. 
So what are the keys to the kingdom? It's a mystery, a secret, not obvious to the understanding. It could be staring you right in front of your face and you wouldn't even know it. Purposely kept in the dark, silently mocked, hunted for dinner. It's a mystery that unlocks the kingdom of heaven. It's a mystery that unlocks the Bible. It's a mystery that unlocks eternal life. So right there, right in front of you at the very end of that video is the most obvious thing in the world, a right side up cross and an upside down cross. And then the upside down cross goes and joins the right side up cross. It goes and it joins the right side up cross because you're upside down. Okay, now, thank you so much. That's an awesome little vid. Now, let me just share the Word of God and what the Lord put on my heart a day ago and watch these scriptures tie everything together. There will be no more. Anyone that wants to argue will have to argue simply with the Word of God. All right, so y'all ready? Here we go. Uh, I want to start with uh, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, and I'm going to show you verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, he's talking to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. See, it says, cannot see the kingdom of God. And then Nicodemus has a question. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So. This is very important scripture to understand that being born again is an essential thing in order for you to see the kingdom of God. Because I'm going to show it to you right now. I'm going to show you the kingdom of God. I'm going to make it obvious to you. I'm going to pull open folder and say, there it is. Here's how you see it. There's only one way to see it. And when you see it, the first thing is recognition. The second part to that change is acceptance. Okay, now, right here, John chapter 3, Jesus. So these are Jesus' words. Yes, Jesus answered and said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, that's going to be one of our scriptures. Another scripture is going to be Isaiah 7, verse 14. Okay. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Emmanuel. Right there. Okay. That's another scripture we're going to use. And then we're going to go to Isaiah 12. And we're going to use all of Isaiah 12. And once we use Isaiah 12, this is that's the scripture the Lord gave me. He said, Jonathan, you have to. I literally was in the house the other day and I heard the Lord tell me, go to Isaiah 12. And I went there and he said, this is what you use to show everybody now, tie it all together for him. And when I went to it, I've seen Isaiah 12 a whole bunch of times. I've shown it to Zach and Corey. He said, guys, look right here. Look what it says. God is my salvation. 
Well, the word God is pretty important, what the name of God is right there. And I'm going to show that to you, but it's bigger than I thought. It's way bigger than I thought. So let's break it down. Get out your notepads, get out eSword, whatever you want. Y'all ready? All right. Let's start right here with John. We'll start with the Gospel of John, where we're going to look up the name of Jesus. And we're going to look it up so you understand that the name Jesus is used in the New Testament, but the concept of Jesus being the head of all of us, the head of all that was created, all the gods, because didn't El, the Almighty God, create a whole bunch of angels? Well, that's why we pray the prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, because he's the father of lights. He's the father of spirits. He's the one that gives, here's a new one, here's a new one. He's the father of spirits. And if you choose to take on a host body, then you become subject to the rules of that system, which can lead, can lead and most of the time does lead to eternal death. The way to get out of the trap is to turn back to your creator, El, the Almighty God. And you've been inverted, so when you invert the whole world, you're able to see the truth. Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, now watch. Here we go. So let's have some fun. Y'all want to have some fun, biblical fun? Let's do it. Okay, here we go. I'll enlarge this. I'm going to enlarge these for you guys. So... Jesus said, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, capital S B I R T, the word is Numa. I'm going to click on that so you can see it. It's Numa. Y'all should know this if you've been coming to this channel. You know that there's only really two choices it means a current of air, a breath. So, but whose breath? And it says, your, The rational soul, by implication, vital principle mental disposition, or superhuman, in parentheses, an angel, comma, demon. Well, in Isaiah, it says that we are yoked together in battle. An angel is yoked to a demon in battle. It says it right there in Isaiah. I'm going to show it to you. Isaiah 61. And the Lord will open the dungeon that you're in, which is your host body, so you can see, he'll redouble your eyes so you can see that you're in a battle and you have, you're in a spiritual battle with the demonic force. Watch. Okay, here you go. Ready? Let's look at the name Jesus. Very important. So you're either a superhuman, an angel, demon, yoked together in battle. So there it is. Superhuman, angel, demon, yoked together. Or you are divine. See the word or right there? So you're either superhuman, which is angel, comma, demon. That's what the superhuman spirit is, angel, comma, demon. Or you become divine God, Christ, spirit, the Holy Spirit. See, obviously, if you've been born again, then you have Christ's Holy Spirit. It's a no-brainer. You go from two spirits that are at war to born again, superhuman, angel, demon, to one new man from the two just like you saw at the end of that little video you go from two one up one down to just up and then your eyes become single and your whole body's full of light okay now let's move on to the name jesus write this down okay guys write this down it is important that you understand it say this word right here say e a sus jesus okay it has nothing to do with these lunatics that are on YouTube that say Jesus is really Zeus by, by quoting this. Oh, it's really Zeus. No, this is the way it's pronounced. It's not Zeus. Here we go. Jesus. So Jesus is pronounced Jesus. It is of Hebrew origin. So the name Jesus is of a Hebrew origin. Hebrew word 3091. And it says, Jesus, that is Yehoshua. So, Yehoshua. So, we're going to click on Hebrew 3091. 
And there it is right there for you to read. Yeho Shua. See it? Okay, now watch. The name Yeho right here comes from Hebrew word 3068, which is the self-existent eternal Jehovah. See it? Self-existent eternal Jehovah. So the self-existent eternal Jehovah. It, down here it says Jehovah the Lord. And it says compare to 3050. Most people don't know this. And I don't show it to you a lot because I don't want other people getting confused. But I'm going to show it to you now. Okay, ready? 3050 means Yah. It says it's contracted from from the self-existent Jehovah, and the meaning the same, Yah, the sacred name, Yah, the Lord most vehement. So y'all have heard the name Yahweh, and it's all the consonants, and it's like the the Lord most vehement, the like holy name of the Lord. Well, that's when the Lord showed me my name meant Yahweh has given. So that's my identity. I'm giving to you because the Lord purchased me and he's, he's using me as a conduit to give what he's got to you through me. Now watch. So here we go. Jesus is the self-existent eternal Jehovah, Yehol, and then Shua, and that's from 3467, and that means properly to open Wide or free, that is by implication to be safe, causatively to free or succor, uh, to avenge, to defend, deliver, help, preserve, rescue, be safe. But I want you to look at this word. Please say it, Yasha. Yasha. See it? Yasha. It means to open, wide, set free, to be safe. Yasha. Okay, that is the root. So when you see Yeho, Make sure you understand Yeho comes from the self-existent eternal Yehovah. I'll say it like that. You may say Jehovah. I'm going to say Yeho. Yehovah. Yehovah. Okay, now. Here is the name of Jesus from Hebrew. So the, the name Jesus from its Hebrew origin. So the name Jesus from its Hebrew origin is what? Yehoshua. What does that mean? Well, Yeho means the self-existent eternal Jehovah. And then Shua means that opens wide. And guess what he opens wide? Your eyes, the dungeon that you're in. Because when you're born again, then you see the kingdom of God. You're like, oh, wow, I can see the, something's not right. The virgin's a dead sheep. Why? Why is it when I turn this girl upside down, she's the devil? Why? Well, now you're starting to see and understand. Okay, now watch. So we've established, no matter what, anyone says that the name Iesus, and we'll do it one more time, Iesus is of Hebrew origin, and Jesus, that is Yeho, which is the self-existent eternal Jehovah, and then Shua, which means to open wide, but it comes from the word yasha. Okay? Okay, everybody good? You got that? Okay, put that off to the side for a moment. Now, here we go. Let's get into the next part. So, then we're going to go to Isaiah 7. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. Okay, so now we're in the Old Testament, and Isaiah is prophesying the coming of the Messiah, and you will call his name what? Emmanuel. Okay, well, Mary and Joseph were told to name the child Jesus, Jesus, but here in Isaiah, it's saying you shall call him Emmanuel. Well, Isaiah was way before Mary and Joseph showed up. So back in the Old Testament, this is this is who they're this is what you're gonna call him. The Lord himself shall give you a sign, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Emmanuel. So now let's go from John 3 5 to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. There it is. 
and you shall call his name. So here comes the Messiah, and here's his name, and his name is going to be an appellation of who he is and what he does. So here it is, Emmanuel. So please say this, Imanu, and then L. And here it is written up here, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Okay, so that word Emmanuel is from Hebrew word 5973. So let me show you that word. It means with us is, with us is in conjunction with. That is in conjunction with. So what does, what does Imanu mean? with us is okay now what's the other part of the word the other part of the word is l emmanuel so emmanuel with us is and then here's the l part hebrew word 410 hebrew word 410 is l the almighty god so it's shortened from you know just to show you guys the root of this i yield and it means a chief politically, very important. Because the chief of all the gods, the head of all the gods is L. He's the chief politically. He's the number one guy. He's the guy. He's like the president of all the gods. He's the chief politically of all the gods. Well, he, where, who's the father of lights in heaven? L, the almighty God. When we pray, our Father, we're praying to El, the Almighty God in heaven. He's a chief politically, also a ram, like a sheep. See it? A ram? From its strength. A pilaster as a strong support, like an oak. Uh, there you go. Okay, now. The coming Messiah, his name is with us is L, the Almighty God. That's it. That's There's no arguing about it. Okay, y'all check all those boxes? You got those boxes checked? Okay, ready? Okay, let's go. We're going to li listen to Max McLean read Isaiah 12. I'm going to stretch this out for you, and then we're going to break it down. And then we're going to cross-reference everything the Lord told me to cross-reference and show you. Here you go. Ready? And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortedst me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Okay, there you go. Now, I have had the scripture as one of the scriptures I've read. I've understood the Lord showed it to me, but he's never put it together like he did yesterday for me. You ready? Jesus, as mentioned in the Gospel of John. Who is Jesus? Well, it says the name Jesus is from Hebrew origin, and it means Yehoshua. The part of the word that's Yeho is Yehovah. So the self-existent Yehovah, and then Shua that opens wide from the root Yasha. Okay, so that's Jesus. That's his name if you were going to talk about him in Hebrew. Okay, so now let's go to... Let's go to Isaiah 12, and here you go. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Okay, look, the word angry is a pretty tough word. To breathe hard, be enraged. Okay, though thou wast enraged with me, thine anger, okay, is turned away. Okay, now watch this. It says... That countenance and face 
is turned away and thou comfortest me, behold, God is my salvation. Okay, everybody say, behold, God is my salvation. Okay, what's the word for God? L. L is my salvation, but check it out. That shouldn't be any big surprise to you because who is Jesus? We just did it in Isaiah 7. Jesus is with us, is El, the Almighty God from heaven. So El, the Almighty God, came into the system that he allowed to be created because he created Elohim. Elohim has free will. Elohim, and that means Elohim is many in one, a cumulative force of a bunch of angels with another force leader that forms the flesh. I think you know who I'm talking about. We'll get to it. So the flesh is formed by who? By whom? Elohim. Well, in order to do that, you have to leave the place you're at. So if you're you're the Father of Lights has created you, but you choose to go beyond the parameters of what's accepted, and you want to take on a host body, which in Exodus 20 it says, "Thou shalt shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness." of anything's in the heavens, the earth, or the water under the earth. Those are some interesting words. The word likeness means embodiment. It does, It's not just talking about someone carving a cross out of wood and sticking it on the wall. No, it's much bigger than that. Now watch. O oh Lord, I will praise thee. So let's look at the word Lord first. Yehovah. See it? O oh Jehovah. Let me ask you a question. If it's saying, O oh, Jehovah, who is that? Well, isn't Jesus the self-existent Jehovah that opens wide, Yehoshua? Of course he is. He's the head of all the gods, Jehovah. Yah, most vehement. Okay, now, said it right there. I showed it to you already. Watch. And in that day, thou shalt say, Lord, I will praise thee, even though thou wast wroth with me. Look, self-existent or eternal Jehovah, Yehovah, right here. Let me change this color so it matches. Okay, there you go. Behold, L is my salvation. L. L, the Almighty God, is my salvation. And you know that because Jesus is with us is L. But look at the word salvation. L is my Yeshua. <laughs> Surprise. So see, I've heard people call Jesus and say, oh, you have to call him Yeshua. You don't even know who he is. That's not even close to right. Yeshua is not the name. It, Yehoshua, but Yeshua, Yeshua means salvation, deliverance, hence aid, victory, saved, prosperity, deliverance. So L is my Yeshua. Now, but look at the root of the word. Ready? Yasha, to open wide, be free, causatively free. Oh, you know, just like when we were back when we're back doing uh, John, let's go back to John chapter 3, right here, the name Jesus, right here. Remember Jesus? It's Jesus, but it's Yehoshua. This is Yehoshua, which is the self existent eternal Jehovah. Yeho, self existent eternal Jehovah, and Shua. To be free, open wide, yasha. Okay, now, I know your brains are starting to put it together right now. Oh, uh, okay, wait a minute. L is my Yeshua. It doesn't say Yehoshua. It says L is my Yeshua. Deliverance, aid, victory, prosperity. And the root of that is Properly to open wide, be free, cause to be safe. Okay, so L. Jesus is Emmanuel. Okay, so now we've nailed it down. There's no going backwards on this. That's what the Bible says, but we know that. 
We know that Jesus is with us as El, the Almighty God. That's the whole point, and we're getting to it. So stay with me. Ready? I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength. Ready? Look at the word Lord. This is very unusual to see all capital letters when it's Lord, because and it be this, 3050. See it right here? 3050. I'm going to underline it. See it? 3050. Right here, at Lord capital, all capitals, is 3068. 3068 is the self-existent eternal Jehovah. But right here, they made a point in showing you that the Lord Jehovah is Yah, the Lord most vehement. And it even tells you right here that it's contracted from 3068, the, the self-existent eternal Yehovah. And the meaning, the same, Yah, the sacred name, of God. Yah, the Lord most vehement. You see it right there? Okay, so now ready? So Yah, Yah, and Jehovah are interchangeable. It's just a definition of the Lord most vehement and Yehovah, the self existent eternal Jehovah. So Yeho, Yehovah, self existent eternal. Well, do you know what self existent means? It means you can exist on your own without anything else. So if you allow Elohim to go and create a system called the host body, the earth, and all that stuff, and then there's people walking around, but all the people who are walking around are attached to the pit because that's the price of the host body. Well, if you come into that system, you come in head down, and if you don't get converted, then that other side gets you. The other side, the pit gets you. But remember... The self-existent eternal Jehovah, which is Jesus, he's been in the Bible since the beginning of the Bible in Genesis 2, when he breathed into Adam the breath of life and man became a living soul. So what does he do? He comes into the system you call the earth through a host body that you call, you know, or that we call Jesus. And then he dies on a cross and he purchases back part of himself, which is you, which is me. That's where we got our soul from, him. And so he's going to come in and purchase back what belongs to him, whoever will turn back, and then he's self-existent. <laughs> you see the system now? It's as obvious as it gets. Now watch, watch this. L is my Yeshua. Doesn't say, It's not Yehoshua, but you get it. Yeshua, deliverance, aid, help. And it's from the, ver from the root. Yasha, you should learn all these words. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord, ready, Yah, Jehovah, Yah, Yehovah is my strength, my force, security, majesty, praise, and power. And my song, he has also become, so he is also become. My salvation. Yeshua. Deliverance. What's the root of that again? Yasha, to open wide. What's he going to open wide? The dungeon. What dungeon? Your body, because you got inverted inside of it, and you don't even know one of your eyes is like, there's an up and there's a down. Why do you think the virgin's a dead sheep when you turn it the other way? Because there's more than one thing going on here. There's a fight between an angel and a demon for that spark of life in you, which is called your soul. Where'd you get your soul? From Yehoshua. You know how I know? Because the Bible says it right here. Watch. We're coming right back to Isaiah. So we're going to go to Genesis right now. Genesis 2. And the Lord God, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, Formed, very important word. Say that word, yatsar, yatsar. It's Hebrew word 3335. Through the idea of squeezing into shape to mold into a form, especially as a potter. See that? Okay, the Lord God formed as a potter, man from the dust, the clay. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man 
became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden. Okay, you get you get the idea that in Genesis 2 was the Lord God putting that spark into his man that is going to commingle with that other race, the serpent race that started the whole thing. Because Elohim is not my salvation, is it? No, Elohim's the, the issue here. Watch. Okay, ready? And we'll get into that in one sec, but I'll go to Genesis 1, and I'll show you right now. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image. See, here's, the, here's Elohim making a group organized for war. That's what they're doing right here. Elohim said, let us make. Ah, saw. See it? To do or to make. Let us make man in our image. Ready? To shade. Okay, the first thing it says about image is to make darker. When you shade something, you make it darker. And then it says a phantom that is figuratively an illusion. So man, right here in Genesis 126, no matter what anyone says, the word is Selem is an illusion. So it's an illusion and it's a resemblance Hence, a representative figure, especially an idol. And I'm going to highlight that a bright green color for you. And you can go over this video again and again until you get this. A resemblance. Hence, a representative figure, especially an idol. A vain show. Y'all know what a vain show is? It's a total poser. Phony fraud. You know. Yep. Here we go. Now, let's go back to Isaiah 12. Ready? Who is your salvation? L. Wait a minute. What about Elohim? Well, Elohim's making the problem right now. Let's go back to L. Let's go back. Ready? L is your salvation, not Elohim. So let's go back to Genesis, and we'll go back to Genesis 1. And here's where you get a two-party system. So Elohim created man in his own vain show, his own illusion. In the image, in the illusion of Elohim, created he him male, as being the most noteworthy sex, and female, Female from the sexual form, but pay attention to puncture, literally to perforate more or less with violence, to specify, designate, libel, to pierce, and to strike through. That's what the word female means, to pierce and strike through. Male and female created he them, and Elohim blessed them. Let me show you the word blessed, very important word. It's Barak, you know, like Barak, the guy that's running things from behind the scenes. It means by implication to bless God as an act of adoration. Or it depends on who God is. If it's Elohim, pay attention. Do you know what vice versa means? And vice versa, man, as a benefit, by euphemism, to curse God or the king as treason. So. When you write here, and Elohim blessed them, well, who's the king? If euphemistically you're cursing the king. El, the almighty God's the king. So that would be cursing the king, wouldn't it? By starting a host party system. Well, if it's a trap for all God's angels, and it's like a way to kill his angels, that would be a good way to, to curse God and start the host party system. To destroy his angels? Wow. To curse God or the king is treason. Okay, let's go back to let's go back to Isaiah now. Isaiah 12. Ready? The Lord, which is Yah, Jehovah, Jehovah, is my strength, and he is also become my salvation. Yeshua. Yasha to open wide. 
Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day, you shall praise the Lord, the self-existent eternal Jehovah. Do you know why? Because you know who the self-existent eternal Jehovah really is. Well, we already know it's Jesus. He's the only one that can be self-existent because he comes in and buys it back. He comes in to what's created and buys it back. Therefore, being self-existent. <laughs> you get it? Yes. Ready? He has become my salvation. And in that day, I shall pray. You shall praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, and make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, the self existent eternal Jehovah. Jehovah, I'm sorry. For he had done excellent things. He is known in all the earth. Get ready for this one. Cry out. And that's what I'm doing. Like, this is awesome. Look at the word cry out right here. Let me just get it in a really cool color. Let's make it bright blue. Cry out. Okay, ready? 6670. Let me color it down here as well. Ready? Cry out. Sahal, to gleam, that is to be cheerful. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> to sound clear, to bellow, cry aloud, lift up, rejoice, shout for joy. <sighs> Woo! Yes! Yes! He's the king. He comes in and saves anyone who's willing to turn back to him and have your eye made single because L is my salvation. And he... He's been around since Genesis 2 in the system. Elohim starts the system, but then in Genesis 2, Yehovah breathes into Adam the breath of life, and man becomes a living soul. See it? Okay, ready. Now, cry out and shout. Did I do that? Okay, let me do that one more time. <gasps> Woo! Yes! <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> cry out and shout. Thou inhabitant of Zion. Zion, a permanent Zion as a permanent capital, a mountain in Jerusalem, a monumental or guiding pillar. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Monumental or guiding pillar. Okay, here we go. The Holy One of Israel. Here we go, look. The Holy One of Israel is in the midst of thee. So, see, here it all is together. Sacred, ceremon ceremonially, ceremonially or morally, God by eminence and angel. Oh, so God by eminence and angel in the midst of thee. And the resurrection is the standing up again. Because you know who's in the midst of you? Everyone gave their heart to Elohim. Because they wanted to do the host body thing. Everyone that's here that's been here. And we know that because in Ezekiel 28, it told us. Ready? Ezekiel 28. Here you go. The word of the self-existent eternal Jehovah came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. So think of Satan in the flesh. Thus saith the Lord God. So thus saith, look at the word Lord right here. It's Adonai. It means the Lord as like a proper name, like Mr. or my Lord. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah. Because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am El. See, now you have the Prince of Tyrus, which is Satan in the flesh, saying, I, saying, I am El. I sit in the seat of Elohim. See if you look, if you read the scripture and you don't know it's El and Elohim, it 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 sounds like absolute babble. Watch. Let me show you. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am God, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God. Though thy set thine heart is the heart of God. <laughs> I mean, does that make any sense? How about this? Thou hast said, I am El. I sit, pay attention, to sit down specifically as a judge in ambush. So now inside of you, Lucifer is sitting in the midst of you. Just while you're committing all your sins, 
you're yoked to a demon, but you're attached to the pit. There's a record held against you everywhere you go. Every single thing you do, the all-seeing eye, every your essence is attached to the pit because the host body's attached to the pit. Okay, so now watch. Thou hast said that I, I am L. I sit in the seat. I sit in the seat. Look at the word seat. The population. The dwelling place. I sit in the seat. The population. All of humanity. I sit in the seat. I sit in the midst of. I dwell to a, in the midst of to ambush. The population. I sit in the seat of Elohim. In the midst. There it is. The heart, the center of anything, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not El. Not you are not the Almighty. Though thou set thine heart is the heart of Elohim. So see it's saying, look, you're saying you're El. <laughs> you set your heart as the heart of Elohim, and here they are, they got their host bodies, but you're not El. Although you set your heart as the heart of Elohim. Okay, well, I'm gonna try and get them back. Mm -hmm. Now, ready? Isaiah 12. Sorry, I thought it said Isaiah 12. Behold, El is my Yeshua. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord. Yah. Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Yeshua, Yasha, to open wide. Now, you ready? Now, y'all remember when Jesus took his ministry, which is uh, made manifest in Luke chapter 4, but Jesus quoted from the book of Isaiah. So Jesus got up, he opened up the book of Isaiah, and he read this. Let's go there. So that'll be in Isaiah 61. Ready? Let's go there. Isaiah 61, he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The spirit, the Ruach of the Adonai Jehovah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Ready? So what spirit is upon our Messiah, when he, what's the spirit that's upon him? What did he say? Well, in Isaiah, it says the spirit of the Lord, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah. See, the spirit of the Adonai, well, the word Lord right here means my Lord, like if you're speaking to your superior, hey, my Lord, and the Lord God, Jehovah, is upon me because the Lord the self-existing eternal Jehovah has anointed me. Okay, ready? Let's go back to Genesis 1. Freak out. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face, the face of the deep. The face means as the part that turns, the turning away. Think of Pink Floyd, the song, The Turning Away. Okay. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim. Oh, we got a problem. Oh, my gosh. And the Ruach Elohim moved upon the face, the face as the part that turns of the waters, the semen. Let us, Elohim said, let us create man in our illusion. Representative figure, especially an idol. All right, let's go back to Isaiah 61. So what's the spirit that's on uh, Jesus? The spirit of the Lord God, self-existent, eternal Jehovah, right there. Self-existent, because the Lord, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah, has anointed me to preach the gospel. By the way, let me help you out, by the way, for all those people that have tried to come in against me. That's you. The Spirit is upon me as well in the alley. Our Father who art in heaven, water and light. Then he showed me immediately who the enemy was, the Hail Mary thing. 
that's the other force running things. The the female goddess thing from the pit that's running the host body system that I got trapped in. 100% not lying. Turn it the other way. 100% no lying. You see the perfection here? <laughs> yeah. Okay, ready? So the Lord God. So no one. So in Isaiah 61, yes or no? Does it say the spirit? What's the word spirit? The ruach. The ruach. Wind, resemblance, breath. The spirit of the Lord God. So that's the self-existent, eternal Jehovah right there. Well, the the first place you see the self-existent, eternal Jehovah is right here in Genesis 2 when the Lord God formed man, his version of man from the dust. Okay, now let's go back to Genesis and let's tear it to pieces. And the spirit of Elohim moved over the face as the part that turns of the semen. And Elohim said, let us make man in our vain show. Let us make man in our resemblance, especially in an idol. Vain show. Illusion. So in the image of Elohim created he himself. Male and female created he them. Don't forget the word female means to pierce or to strike through. Created he them. And Elohim blessed them, and Elohim blessed. So he's cursing God and the king as treason right there. Because it's the opposite. He's not, he, whatever Elohim's doing right there is for Elohim's own benefit. But it's cursing God as treason right there. There it is. Okay, ready? Here we go. Let's go to Genesis 2. Ready? Ready? Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and the host of them, now look at the word host, ready? A mass of persons. Okay, let me ask you a question. What happened in Genesis 1? Well, did it say, and Elohim blessed them and said, go forth and multiply? It does, right here. Genesis 1, and Elohim, let's see, blessed them, and Elohim said, be fruitful and multiply. Okay, so be fruitful and multiply. Make a bunch of yourselves. And the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host. Ready? The host. A mass of persons organized for war. There it is. So they're getting their, they're getting their group ready in the beginning for the war against God's angels. And the host of them. And on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work. What does the word work say? Properly deputy ship. Generally employment, but never servile. So does, is Satan, is Satan a, uh, is Satan a servile? Does he uh, submit to the Lord God? No, he's against him. Lucifer is against him, but he is the anointed cherub that, covereth it's like this whole flesh thing well it's a system that exists that allows choice and free will that's what it is you could never love god unless you had free will once you know that god exists and what he did to try and get you back he came into the system on a cross for the crappy decision that i made as an angel correct and when you search him out with all your heart, you'll find him. And when you find him, you'll be full of joy because you'll know that the whole Bible's true. And you will no longer be afraid of death. The key, the big key is death's no longer burdensome. Why? Because you know the truth and the truth sets you free of the fear of death because you know you're an eternal being now. What do you got to worry about? Oh my God. Oh, I might die and have to leave this freaking serpent party? Bummer. <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh-huh. Y'all getting this now? So Elohim finished his work. Properly deputy ship. Okay, now here's the key right here. These are the generations. Look at the word generation. Descent, that is family history, birth, generations. Do you understand that generations can go on and on and on and on and on? The generations of the heavens 
the heavens. I'm going to try and click on that. The Shamayin and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. But who made the earth? Well, it says Elohim did. Why? Because they did. It's called free will. So Elohim, the cumulative force of Elohim and their leader, makes an earth, free will, take on a host body, but then you're subject to eternal death unless you get converted. The word converted means turned quite around. That's why you have to be turned quite around, turned back. Now, you ready? One of the very first scriptures the Lord ever showed me when all this started was Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. I'm going to quote it two ways. Those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they're doing. They turn everything upside down. Well, who is they? I mean, okay, well, if you find out who they is, then that's very helpful. Now let me do the King James Version, and then I'm going to show you how the one that created the whole system is the one that turned you upside down. You ready? Woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord. Their works are in the darkness. Remember to shade. Their works are in the darkness. And they say, who seeth us? Who knoweth us? So their identity is concealed. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Well, if you already have been turned upside down, if you turn everything else upside down, like I turned the virgin upside down, I'm really turning it up. But obviously, surely you're turning of things upside down. So if I take the virgin and I turn it the opposite direction, then I am turning back to God metaphorically to see the truth, to see Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So when you turn the virgin the other way and you're like, whoa, why is it a freaking dead sheep? That's weird. Why would the virgin be a dead sheep? Hmm, why is it a dead sheep? And you got to seek out that answer with your heart. And I did. And the Lord just lavished me with all this supernatural data. But now here we go. Ready? So the getting turned upside down thing is what the enemy did to us. They inverted us. It's like the song, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, by the Beatles. By the way, Beatles are bugs. Um, so let's go to Isaiah, and let me show you that real quick, and then get ready for the a couple of just busters. Here you go. Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. So woe unto them that seek deep to hide. Look at the word hide. To hide by covering, literally or figuratively, to be absent. To conceal or hide oneself. To hide self. See it? To hide self. To keep secret. So, woe unto them who seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Well, who's the Lord? That's Jesus, the self-existent eternal Jehovah. And their works are in the dark. Look at the word works. Generally a transaction because you were sold into slavery. But look, it's the same word as let us make man in our image. Asa, to do or to make, to accomplish, to bring forth. But right here it shows you a transaction because you were sold into slavery. So here we go. Their works are in the dark. Darkness, obscurity, to darken. See, to darken, you know, like to shade, to be dim, to hide. Their works are in the darkness, and they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Now, here you go. Ready? Surely your turning of things upside down, ready? Turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. You know, remember Genesis 2 when... The Lord God, self-existing eternal Jehovah, which is Jesus, breathes into his version of man the breath of life, and man becomes a living soul. So when Jesus is saving you, he's saving a piece of himself, self-existent. Get it? Because <laughs> we're a little we have a little piece of Jesus. That's our origin. And then you come in, but you're inverted. But if you turn back to him, he'll save you. And you have eternal life. 
instead of eternal torture and death like all the false prophet hunters and all the haters. That's their, that's their eternity. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Look at the word potter's. Remember I told you to remember this word? Yatsar. Through the idea of squeezing it into shape, especially as a potter. Uh-huh. And clay. So let me show you where the potter's clay is. Genesis 2. When the Lord God, the self-existing eternal Jehovah, that's Jesus. And see, this is what confuses everybody. They see the word Elohim. They're like, oh. But Jesus is the chief politically of all of them. He's like the head ruler. And they're trying to say, no, we're doing things our way. Okay. Well, when you do them your way, all these angels get trapped in those bodies and then they're subject to going to the pit. And who's waiting down in the pit for him? Satan. Who's the angel of the bottomless pit? Satan. And who's he the king of? The locusts. And what are they doing down there? They're assimilating angels into locusts. Woo! Tell me it's not perfect. It's so perfect. Why do you think I have like 70,000 images that prove it? It's so crazy. <gasps> okay, you ready? Now, yes or no? Have you seen any kink in this? You ready for the slam dunker? Again. Uh-huh. Credit where credit's due. Thanks, Fallon. <laughs> Sorry. Ready? This is one that's just a killer. Cle Ecclesiastes 7. Ready? It says, For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life. Okay? Giveth life. To live. To revive. To them that have it. Now, you ready? Pay attention now. Consider the work of Elohim. Ready? The work. Maesa. Generally a transaction. Oh, where did you see that? Oh, in Isaiah. Remember in Isaiah, those who try and hide their plans? Okay, the work. Consider the work of Elohim. A transaction. But look, the root of the word is asa. Okay, so you know where you've seen that word asa, to do or to make? You've seen it in Genesis 1. Let us make a saw man in our vain show. Let us make man in our representative figure, especially an idol. That's the big no-no. Uh-huh. There you go. That's the serpent thing happening. So consider the work of Elohim right here. Consider the work of Elohim. I'm going to highlight it all. Super bright green. or Let's do a super bright yellow. And then I'll underline this with a line. God right here. I'll color this pink just to kind of give it that female energy thing. Consider the work of Elohim. For who can make straight that which Elohim has made crooked? Okay, so who can make straight that which Elohim has made crooked? But let's look at the word. Who can make straight that which Elohim has Turned upside down to bow self. Oh, my God. Like, you know, when you take one half of the bow and you turn it the other way, push them together and stick it in a host body, you have light and darkness in the same. So I'm trying to make like a bow with my fingers, like a bow, one, and then the other, light and darkness. In the same body. So then you turn the female energy eye the other way. And you can see. Because the female energy. That's the serpent energy running the whole thing. <laughs> yep. Here it is. Consider the work of Elohim. Who can make straight that which Elohim has. Said, read this out loud. Turned upside down. Pervert. Deal perversely. Bow self. Falsify. The word is avath. Turn upside down. So who can make straight? But look at that word. It means who can equalize? Who can set in order? Okay, ready? Is up and down equal? Yes or no? No. Up is up and down is down. But if I turn the down up, did I make it equal? Yes. Who can make equal that which Elohim has turned upside down? See, Elohim turned everything upside down in Genesis 1 by making those body. 
<laughs> I told you. Woo! Why do you think the flesh is in opposition to the spirit of the living God? Why do you think you have to be born again? Because you're in the flesh. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's it. Okay, now, y'all understand? When you take Isaiah 12, you have all the elements in one scripture. You have the self-existent eternal Jehovah, which is, we know that's Jesus. Jesus is Jesus, which is Yehoshua. Yeho means self-existent eternal Jehovah. Shua means that it opens wide. Now, let's go back to Isaiah 61 and freak out. Y'all ready? Let's go freak out again. Okay, here we go. Isaiah, so you see the scriptures opening up? Are they wide open for you now? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me. Not Elohim. Not the Spirit of Elohim is upon me, but the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord God hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Ready? The opening of the prison. Redoubled. Opening of a dungeon. Redoubled. How do you do that? To open the senses, especially the eyes. To redouble your eyes. There it is. The opening of a dungeon. Redoubled. Opening of your eyes to them that are ready, bound. Ready? Bound. To yoke or to hitch. By analogy, to fashion, in any sense, to join in battle. To yoke or to hitch, joined in battle. You know, like uh, that tattoo I've shown you guys over and over again of the guy that's got the big sheep on his back that has an angel and a demon yoked together. You know, like the Van Halen album and like all the 70,000 images I've shown you guys. <laughs> yes. <gasps> Woo! It's done. The word is the word is solved. Do you understand what this means, you guys? Oh my goodness. Ready? So the Spirit of the Lord God, that's Jesus, is upon me. This is the Old Testament. He hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. To the captives. Ready? Look at the word captives. To transport into captivity. Transport from where to where? How about from heaven to the earth? To transport into captivity, to carry away, lead away, lead astray. There it is. Okay, now let's go to Luke. Y'all ready? And see this, this scripture, Isaiah 61, 1? Now this is the scripture that Jesus read when he took his ministry. He read from the book of Isaiah. And here it is in Luke chapter 4. And let's see, here it is. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay, not the spirit of Elohim. See, we're Elohim and we're in big freaking trouble. That's why none of them want to hear it. And we'll do that very last. Ready? The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Look at the word gospel. It says, you, angel, ezo. Look, angel. Okay, watch this. Like angel. You means good. And then angel, ezo is angel. See it? To preach the gospel, the good angel, to announce good news, to sh declare, to show good tidings. What do you think? The gospel is, says it right there. That's the gospel. Jesus died on a cross for your sins because the whole, the whole scene was a representation of your condition. You had one on the right, one on the left, and Lucifer sitting in the midst of you. Well, when Jesus stands up in the midst of you, he takes the one on the right, one on the left, he binds them together, turns one up, and you're made whole again in Christ, and you're born into eternal life. Isn't it awesome? Okay. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal. 
Ready? Look at the word heal. To make whole. That's how you heal. Ready? To heal. To heal, to make whole the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance, a pardon from sin to the captives. Uh, let's see, a prisoner of war. See, because you were, you're a prisoner of war because we're all prisoners of war. No matter what anyone says, the Bible in Genesis 2 says, and the host was finished, the group prepared for war. So we're angels and we're prisoners of a war unless you turn back to the Lord. Here it all is, guys. See them come alive, baby. Preach, preach deliverance to the captives, the prisoners of war, and the recovering of sight to the blind. The recovering of sight, the restoration of sight. Ana blepsis. Ready? To look up, to recover your sight and receive your sight by looking up. How do you do that? Well, just turn everything upside down. Just watch my videos. I've got 70,000 images that I've been showing you all this. There's more than just the image of the virgin that's the dead sheep. There's tons of it. I think I'm going to play the intro to the DVD. We've already got the intro ready, you guys. And it's so good. I, I want to... You know what? Why don't you guys leave your comments and tell me what you think? Would you guys like to get to see some of it as we produce it? It's super good. The, the intro, I think, is just like, bam! Oh, sorry, Satan. Oh, bam! Oh, sorry. Here, let me help you up. No, <laughs> bam. No, no, I'm not going to help you up. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh-huh. He's going to get just jacked. Okay, ready? The deliverance of the captives, the recovery of the sight to the blind. Ready? It says op opaque as if smoky. Like, you know, as if smoky, like shady or opaque, which isn't, let's see. Uh, yeah, it says to envelop with smoke. And the recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Ready? Figuratively a pardon, remission of sins. In Genesis 1, Elohim created a host body system. Elohim created a host body system. Who can equalize that which Elohim has turned upside down? They turned everything upside down in Genesis 1. That's why you have Adidas original, like we're the original, we're Genesis 1. That's what Adidas original is manifesting. They all hang upside down and all the commercials, they always start upside down because they say we're the original. They are the original. They're the original host bodies with the Ruach Elohim, with the breath of Elohim. But then what's that other breath that comes into them? The breath of the self-existent eternal Jehovah mixed with the Ruach Elohim. Bam, bam, bam. Woo! She got two different things going on. An angel and a demon. And that's what I've been preaching for, well, since I got saved. And the Lord just put it all together with the scripture. Isaiah 12, that incorporates every single thing in six verses, I think. All right. I love you in Christ. I'm just going to let this fly right now. I could just go on and on freaking out. Because now... Go to, you know what? Let me show you what you have available right now. Watch this. You want to really get yourself to where you know this in your heart of hearts? Let me show you what to do. Let me show you what to do. Ready? Do this. Go to special projects too. Go to this uh, just for fun. Okay, right here. And I populated this with so many scriptures. Uh, just go through all these scriptures. Just click on uh, click on each one. There's self they're self-explanatory. You just, I mean, everything in here now, all these scriptures now fall into perfect place. You can't, all this, this is all backup. You see all this? Why do you think the time of trouble, the great tribulation, is called the time of the female rival? Female rival, you know, Genesis 1, to pierce, to puncture with violence. Yeah, they're creating male and female system. And now it's all there. 
and it's all been see the Lord had me put together all this stuff hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of supernatural scriptures that people have never known and he had me get them all together and even though I've been in Isaiah 12 many times the Lord told me you have to go there now and he wanted to show he wanted to open it all up to my understanding and it cross references the entire thing Jesus is Yehoshua, the spirit that was breathed into, you know, at the beginning in Genesis 1 is the Ruach Elohim. Jesus, the spirit of the self-existent eternal Jehovah, is the spirit that saves us. And now it's proven according to the word of God. Remember that, all you false prophet hunters. And now would be a really good time. Uh, Lord, I'm going to pray for each one of them that, uh, I would pray that, you know, that somehow that's not a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because I know it's the only unforgivable sin. So God have mercy on everybody, and I mean that. As someone was hanging off a cliff, I'd reach over to get them. How cool is this? <laughs> Guys, it's been a long 20 years for getting all this figured out. It's been some ciphering. <laughs> been doing some serious ciphering with me and the boys here in Texas. And I think we've done got it figured out finally. Mm -hmm. It's actually the most simple thing in the world, really. It really is. But it's encrypted. The whole Bible is encrypted by a spiritual being. And if you haven't given your heart to him and you're not willing to know the truth, you will never understand it. And if you're a liar and a little snake operator, no, he won't, he won't let you have it. You can't have a duplicitous little rat, little rat self going on. You got to get rid of it. You got to just admit who you are. Just admit who you are and what you've done. Say you're sorry. The devil made you do it because the devil in you is what did all the bad stuff. The angel in you is just getting drugged to the pit. That's the way it works. All right. This is Jonathan Clack, and I love you in Christ. This is a bear. People have told, uh, you know, a lot of people that I'm a cult. Uh, okay. I'd like to be known as the bear hug cult. So I like to give a bear hug to everybody at the end of a video because I know we all could use a hug. I know a lot of us in our lives... You don't have someone to give a hug. Just grab your pillow and hug your pillow and know that I'm there for you. I love you in Christ. All right. What a gift, huh? Woo! That's it. All right. So I'm going to let this fly. I want you to be in an awesome mood. The end of the world's here. And if you're in Christ, the end of the world's like, yeah. If you're not in Christ, it's like, oh, no. Yeah. So anyway, it's a double-edged sword. Depends on which side you're on, you know. But Satan wants to kill every single sheep in the system. Remember, it's always serpents and sheep. It's always the same in all the imagery I've shown you guys. All right. I love you in Christ. Peace and grace.